the song and for the giving. And uh, we have been, uh, I'm going to move right along here, Mr. David. Uh, we have been looking specifically over the last several weeks at the fruit of the Spirit. And as we get right into Galatians chapter 5, this letter that was written to Galatia that Paul wrote, he said, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, or patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against th such things there is no law. Now, even though we're quite familiar with these terms, with these words, with this fruit, uh, let's be reminded this morning that these are Christ-like characters that we are to express as His Spirit leads us forward. And as Jesus says, these things will not be able to be a part of you unless you remain or abide in me. Last week we talked about goodness and Adam Schott was here and he read the passage of scripture that reminded us of the parable of the talents and uh, the gold, uh, the bags of gold and you remember that the servant, uh, that the master was away and he came back and he spoke to his three servants and the third servant really hadn't done anything with the talents that he had been given uh, with these bags of gold that he had been given, but Jesus, or, or this, the master, went to the first two servants and he gave them this phrase, not well done, good and successful servant, but well done, good and faithful servant. Well done, good and faithful servant. And that's what we want to focus on this morning as we focus on the fruit of faithfulness. And uh, I was trying to figure out what's the difference between faith and faithfulness. And uh, faith is really what we choose to believe in, what we choose to trust in. And so for us, we, we trust, we choose to believe in God. And um, Martin Luther King Jr. said this, I found this on somebody's Facebook, it says, faith is taking that first step even when you can't see the rest of the staircase. And uh, I was reminded of sometimes when I have like a big box of groceries and I'm like, I can't even see. I hope I'm going downstairs okay or whatever it might be. And you've probably been there as well. And, uh, and that's faith. We think of things that go beyond ourselves and we're just stepping into something that we're not really sure of. But faithfulness, faithfulness is when we choose to uh, live in accordance with what we believe in. We choose to live in agreement with what we believe in. So we have faith in God, and we choose to live our lives honoring and pleasing to Him. And He remains faithful even when we are not. Now, in the Greek, faithfulness comes from the Greek word that means trustworthy and reliable. In the Hebrew, it, it, the word literally means firmness. And figuratively, it means security. And morally, it means fidelity or devotion to. So there's a lot of dimension to this word faithfulness. Someone defined faithfulness like this. Faithfulness is love that hangs on. Love that doesn't quit. Love that keeps on going. It's the friend that keeps believing in you. It's the parent or grandparent that keeps on praying for you. Faithfulness is divine repetition. It's joy continuous. It's peace that keeps on coming. It's kindness that doesn't quit and doesn't give up. It's goodness that's expressed over and over and over again. You can always count on it being there. Faithfulness is the tortoise at the race with the tortoise and the hare, and you wonder why is the tortoise even here? It seems worthless at the start of the race, but it's the only thing that remains at the end of the race and wins the race, the faithfulness of the tortoise. Faithfulness is that great attribute that we often take for granted with the Holy Spirit in our lives. It's the heartbeat that keeps on pumping. 
How do we make ourselves faithful? We can't in and of ourselves make ourselves faithful. Just like God is love and he pours his love in us so that we can experience love and because he first loved us, we can love him and because of the power of that love that resides within us when we capture the presence of the Holy Spirit and open ourselves up to that, then we can express that love. It's the same thing with faithfulness. We can't manufacture faithfulness on our own. It's only when we get into the presence of God and allow Him to do what only God can do that we experience and express the, the fullness of faithfulness that comes from Him. That's where faithfulness is born. When we take the time to read the Bible, we see throughout Scripture time and time again and always God's faithfulness. When we live in the Spirit and we reflect on the goodness of God and what He has done for us and in us and through us, we are aware of God's faithfulness. Let's look at some Scripture verses that remind us of God's faithfulness. Lamentations 2. Verse 21 and 20 through 23 says, Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Amen. Just before Joshua leaves uh, the, the Israelites and he speaks of God's faithfulness, he reminds them in Joshua 23, he says, Now I am about to go away from all the earth, you know with all of your heart and soul that not one of all the good promises the Lord your God gave you has failed. Every promise has been fulfilled, not one has failed. Amen. I mean, it isn't just like, hey, don't forget. He's like, you know with all your heart and soul mm -hmm. that God has done this. Amen. And there's not one that you can deny. Hebrews, the writer of Hebrews chapter 10, says, let us hold unswervingly to the hope that we profess, for he who promised is faithful. Amen. David writes this in Psalm 36, your love, Lord, reaches to the heavens, your faithfulness to the skies. You can catch that third day song. It's a good one. First John 1, 9 says, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. When we take, why do we take the time to read scriptures like this? Because in order for us to live faithfully, we need to know God's faithfulness and we need to experience that faithfulness in our heart because faithfulness comes from God. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Like the faithfulness of God that Isaiah experienced when God called him into ministry to be a prophet to the nation of Israel. Remember, Isaiah saw the Lord high and seated on his throne. The train of his robe filled the temple. The seraphim were there with the six wings, and they were crying out, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Verse Verse 4 of Isaiah 6 says, At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and the threshold shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. And what was Isaiah's position and perspective at that point? Verse 5, Isaiah says, Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. But God was faithful. Right? A coal, piece of coal was taken with tongs and placed upon his lips, and God restored Isaiah. God took his sins away. They were atoned for and took his guilt away, and he restored Isaiah. And Isaiah was used in a mighty way because God's faithfulness was present in Isaiah's life. We can't produce faithfulness, but God produces faithfulness in us even when we are faithless. With that in mind, let's take a look at this relationship that Jesus had with the disciple, the apostle Peter. 
We're looking in Matthew chapter 16, starting with verse 21. Here's what it reads. It says, from that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders and the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed, and on the third day be raised to life. Well, Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. Verse 23, Jesus turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, and you, you do not have the mind, you do not have in mind the concern of God, but merely human concerns. Then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? Let's unpack a few ideas from the scripture this morning. Number one, faithfulness doesn't always feel good. And we love those feel-good moments when all the stars are aligned and all of our friends and family and people that we know and love are feeling good and all is well, but there are other times in our life that that's not the case. And sometimes we have to make hard decisions. Sometimes those choices with faithfulness is the long-term good over the short-term happiness. Sometimes we have to choose long-term good over short-term happiness, and that's when faithfulness gets hard. The example of this is we know that the only way that we experience peace and forgiveness and have relationship with God is through His Son, Jesus Christ. And when Jesus knew the choice that He was to make, if He were to choose this path of redemption for all mankind, He would have to endure a horrible death on a cross. Jesus knew that there were people that would reject Him, but He also knew that there would be other people that would put their faith in Him and through him experience a life like no other. So in the end, Jesus chose the hard path. He chose long-term good over short-term happiness. It was the ultimate act of faithfulness from Jesus that fuels our faith today. Now it's hard to stay faithful to people that don't share those things that are important to us, that aren't faithful to those things that are important to us. And listen, we can't control anybody else, but we can ask the power of God to help us to remain faithful even in the face of those that may make other choices. An author put it this way, faithfulness lives where love is stronger than instinct. <clears throat> Where love is stronger than instinct. Instinct, our instinct is self-seeking, but God's love is self-sacrifice. So when we allow God's love to lead us and we follow that lead, when we abide in Christ and allow the love of God to fill our heart, then that love captures us and helps us to set the pace, to set the tone for our lives and we respond effectively. We remain faithful to what God aligns us to. Number two, faithfulness is to God's calling, not man's opinion. Verse 22 tells us that Peter began to rebuke Jesus. I mean, this is one of the people that Jesus was intentionally trying to stay faithful to and he finds this guy telling him off and and throwing him off, and Jesus chooses instead to remain faithful. And he said, listen, get behind me. He doesn't allow another person's reactions to sway him, to veer him off course. Jesus is like, I'm doing this because my Father's called me to do it. The very foundation of faithfulness is being consistent. It's expressing goodness over and over again. And that's not always easy. Because sometimes it comes down to, to being willing to walk hand in hand with a life 
with people through the good and the bad and all that goes with that. But listen, life in Christ is being faithful and staying faithful no matter what. As painful as life can get, when all is said and done, we can look back and we can continue to see God's faithfulness over and over again. That's why those testimonies are so powerful, right? It draws us into the presence of God and reminds us that, wow, this goes way beyond the life of that person. And we see change and we see transformation and we see God's faithfulness through it all because God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God's always, God always remains faithful. And then number three, <coughs> God's faithfulness is an example and invitation to our faithfulness. Here's how Jesus responded after he talked to Peter. He said, listen, everybody. He said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up the cross, and follow me. Jesus understood the only way these guys are going to remain faithful to what I'm calling to them, calling them to do, is they're going to have to take some radical steps. Peter was... Peter's an interesting character study, right? He has this disease called foot and mouth disease. He's always sticking his foot in his mouth, and, and it makes us feel great, you know, compared to Peter, because Peter denies Christ, he corrects Jesus, he rebukes him, he loses faith in him, and he tells him how it should be. And we can go ahead and laugh about that, but here's the truth. You have to show up to mess up. Regardless of what Peter does and doesn't do, he continues to come around. He continues to remain faithful to Jesus. And here's what I'm learning about Peter and how Jesus sees Peter in the midst of all the failure and all the mess up and all those things that you're like, Peter, why did you even just say that? Jesus chooses Peter's faithfulness over the reputation of the Pharisees. Jesus chooses Peter's faithfulness over the wisdom of the Sadducees. Faithfulness is showing up and showing up again. And when we show up again and again in the presence of God, that's what changes us, that's what affirms us, and that's what transforms us and helps us to remain faithful in Him. Make no mistake, if we keep showing up, Jesus is never going to leave us hanging. And He's always going to provide an opportunity for us to go further than we are, and he will guide us in, through each step that we take to get there. Woody Allen has said over and over again, 80% of success is showing up. Faithfulness is not just doing a good thing. It's doing a good thing, and doing another good thing, and another good thing, and another good thing. It's putting ourselves in a position to be used by God over and over and over again. That's faithfulness. When we step out in faith in the presence of God and we show up and we make ourselves available to God, that's faithfulness. Being faithful to God is not only what we're called to do, it's who we're called to be. But God doesn't want us to just show up, right? He wants us to take it to the next level. And uh, here's the thing, we can have a great job, but if we're just standing there, we can still get fired, right? Right? And we can have children and be a parent of children, but it doesn't mean that we're a good mom and dad if we're not building into their lives. But here's the great thing about Jesus. We can make ourselves available, and he's not asking us to do anything. He just said, you just make yourself available, and I, my faithfulness will make you strong. My faithfulness will make you faithful as you keep your faith in me. So when Peter shows up, Jesus doesn't just notice him. He speaks into Peter's life, right? And as a result, Peter does some pretty amazing things, pretty remarkable things, especially through, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Even when Peter messes up and messes up, he doesn't give up. Jesus doesn't give up on Peter. And at times, Peter thinks he knows better than Jesus. At times when he's walking on the water, he loses faith in Jesus. He denies him over and over again. And yet, even though Jesus sees those actions and reactions in Peter's life, Jesus continues to say, hey, I want you to feed my sheep. Hey, listen, 
I'm going to build my church. And you know what? Your name is Simon, but I'm changing your name to Peter because it means rock. And on the rock, I'm going to build my church. And at the beginning of everything that happened, Peter was the first one to step out right after Pentecost. And he helped to lead through the power of God three or more than 3,000 people in that day to the Lord. And they were baptized. He started with the life of Peter. Because Jesus saw the beyond Simon's circumstances and he saw what Peter could become. And here's the reality. I think we spend too much time judging people based upon their past. And we call them a Simon when they can be a Peter to the eyes of Christ. So that's how we have to see people. We don't see them based upon their faithfulness. We see them based upon <coughs> God's faithfulness working in their life, transforming them. We take a step back and we remember how God was faithful to us. Amen. Helping us to get where we are today. So how can we judge that as a person? What if when we saw a Simon, we call him a Peter? What if when, when our faithfulness was weak, we stepped forward and said, God, pour your faithfulness in me so that I can be faith-filled in you. God remains faithful and his faithfulness echoes through all generations and we can trust God enough to take a step of faith. We can trust God enough to take a leap of faith. And that's what we have to wrestle with, right? We can say, we talked about this in Sunday school, we can say love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That's great. We can talk about God's love all day long and say God is love. Let love flow through my life. But can we say God is faithful even when we hit the storms? Can we see God's faithfulness? Are we willing to trust God's faithfulness when he's telling us to step out on that first step when we can't see the rest of the staircase? I think we can. And when we do, we will experience a life like no other. And God will receive glory for all that's accomplished. God, we thank you for your faithfulness in our lives. We thank you for the faithfulness that we see in the lives of people that have chosen to follow you. And even now, God, we have an opportunity to celebrate that together. Amen. And so, God, as we turn to, uh, to baptize a couple people today, we're reminded that it was your faithfulness to start over again. When the world was filled with sin, you said, let the world be flooded with, a, with water so that we can wash it clean and start again. And when Jesus stepped forward and you have groomed him to be faithful without sin, to step forward and begin his ministry, he was baptized. And he went into the wilderness and he came back and said, here's what I'm here for. And he began a new work as you worked in him through his life as he remained faithful to you. So God, I pray that you would help us to be reminded of those things this morning as we celebrate your goodness in our lives, as we celebrate your faithfulness in our lives, because we put our faith in you. And because you are faithful, we can remain faithful as we continue to abide in you and trust you for all of these things. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I am going to ask the Baldwin's to come forward at this time. So, uh, I will take this microphone off, by the way. Uh, you want to take a minute to uh, do a baptism here today. Now, I will say that both Katie and Gabe, Gabriel, have been baptized when they were younger. Which is pretty young, right? And that was over at Covenant Hills in a lake. Come on up here, you guys. Come on up here. They were baptized in a lake, and they they were like, "Listen, all I all I wanted to do was make sure I didn't like drown." And uh, there was a lot going on. And and basically, we didn't ask any questions. It was just okay. Here's the next church we baptize. It's nothing wrong with that, but but they said, "Listen, we feel like God is setting us apart, and so we want to honor Him." And uh, 
when I offered the invitation that we could keep this baptistry through today, they said, hey, we want to be a part of, we want to be a part of that. So um, I'm going to ask you guys, just real quick, I don't want to put words in your mouth, so would you just briefly tell me why you're up here today? sins are forgiven through faith in Jesus Christ? Do you renounce Satan and his works to turn away from those things? Do you renounce or turn away from the ungodliness of the world and all of its sinful desires? Okay. Will you live in obedience to Christ? Will you actively participate in the life and the ministry of the church that Jesus has established? Do you accept the Old Testament and the New Testament as the authority for your life? Yes. And the final question, will you, by this act of baptism that symbolizes your faith in Christ, testify to the world that you are a follower of Jesus Christ?
I'm honest. I mean, this is 95 degree weather, or weather. <laughs> uh, if you'd like to be baptized this morning, we have some extra towels here. We're available for that. Come on up here, man. Yes. Devin. Hey. So, um, do you have a ter uh, do you have a testimony that you want to share with this congregation this morning?